Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Gargoyles are a scientific fact, and they're more no more dangerous than a high school dropout on a motorcycle. This is episode 131, recorded January 13th, 2021. Magazine. Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co host, Jeff Moore, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Tonight, we are going to discuss Gargoyles, uh, one, one of the more memorable, I was going to say best, but that's going to be debated during the show. More memorable horror uh, TV movies from the 70s. Uh, Duel is obviously the best one, right? So it can't really be Duel. But, uh, well, you got Trilogy of Terror. There are a lot. Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. You also have Night Stalker. Night Stalker. Oh, my God. No this one, in my, my, I just runs up there. All right, so we're talking about Gargoyles from 1972, but let me introduce the rest of the crew, starting off with the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff Moore, sir, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm glad you picked this movie, and I don't know what else to say till <laughs> How about <laughs> saying Nakatakachinko? Oh, yeah. Oh, Nakatakachinko. Oh, you, uh, here's your dollar. All right, also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director of special effects, effects special effects guru. Oh, yeeks. And all around, nice guy. How you doing? Oh, got that right. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm also glad you picked this. This uh, this is a real blast to uh, to my childhood. Yeah. Well, the only, well, one of the reasons I picked it is I wanted to watch it, but the other one was is that Chad and I both have been like, Pushing this movie, haven't you? Haven't you, Chad? Right? Uh, yeah, I've been. I've been right, wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah. All right. So also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host, decades of horror, the classic era, sir. We are. We're doing it. We're doing gargoyles. I'm chomping at the bit <laughs> to get into this movie. I'm so so glad. So glad. <laughs> Oh, me too. Me too. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to introduce everybody again. We're going to go and give uh, like, when did we first see it? What were our first impressions at that time? And then we're going to discuss the film and then we're going to wrap things up toward the end. Uh, but the film we're talking about is Gargoyles. Now, this is a DVD cover because, well, it went straight to straight to TV. It was a TV. Yeah. So there mm -hmm. isn't really a poster poster. If there is, I couldn't find it. There's all kinds of weird ones things out there mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know what i really wanted to find and i couldn't do it i'm sure it's out there somewhere is like the tv guide picture of it you know when it's coming oh, yeah, on yeah. november 21st 1972 on cbs that would have been awesome uh and that's when it came out uh november of 1972 uh i you know it'd be interesting to find out what day that was uh it feels like it was a friday it feels like a friday film it was like a Friday. All right, director. I don't think so. uh, of course. <laughs> director Bill Norton, writers Stephen Karf and Eleanor Karf. I wonder uh, if they knew each other. If they didn't, wouldn't that be really awesome? Yeah. <laughs> you're a Karf too. Oh, holy cow, and you're doing this. Uh, the cast includes Colonel Wilde, Jennifer Salt. Man, that name sounds familiar. Grayson Hall, <laughs> Bernie Casey, Scott Glenn. <laughs> which I did not know was going to happen. And when it did, I fell out onto the board. Also, <laughs> William Stevens' tagline was, they're coming for you. Synopsis is an anthropologist, paleontologist, and his daughter, while traveling through the southwestern U.S., stumble upon a colony of... What? Oh, there they go, stumbling right there. Something like upon a living, breathing gargoyles. Uh, I think that was actually somebody's cat, but we'll get to that, clumsy later. that was that was somebody's cat. I don't know. <laughs> it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. It was, it was a Tuesday. Oh, it was like Tuesday yeah. movie of the week. Whoa! Did Tuesday you just, movie. Did you just night night calculate movie. that in your head? Are you like Rain Man or something? Oh. He can uh, read. Uh, as far weird. as you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Rain Man. Uh, why don't you go first? And when did you first see this? And what did you think of it? I saw it on TV and I thought it was great. Um, I was also in the boat of thinking we should do this, but I was fairly convinced it wouldn't hold up. And I'm, I think I was wrong. There are some, 
you know, there are some rough spots, you know, like the suits are pretty obvious, but other than that, um, I, I like this a lot. It's got a great cast. Uh, it does a great job setting up, you know, the history of it or the mythology of it. And I think that the script in terms of how things roll out is pretty tight. You know, there's, there's little things that happen like, uh, I don't know. He's, he's, um, keeps playing this tape of when he goes to, uh, what was the guy's name? Willie? Uh, Uncle uh, Willie. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Willie. Willie. Yeah. Uncle Willie's <laughs> desert museum. Uh, and his daughter doesn't like it. It freaks her out. And he does it one time when she's there in bed in the motel room and she, she freaks out. So the next time he, he goes into the bathroom, which is not a very bright move if case gargoyles come in. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I enjoyed this. I don't know what else to say other than one thing I did not know, and I'm sure we'll get into, or maybe I'll just save that because I'm sure Doc's got it on his list of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'll save it for more details. I enjoyed the hell out of it, and I thought it held up pretty good with the exception of, you know, wrinkles in the suits. So. Yeah, but I mean, it was 1972. And, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certain... I, 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 I almost felt like they almost had too many of them, and I did get a vibe, too many of the gargoyles, you know, that, um, I don't know. I, I got a, a definite uh, flying monkey vibe from the way they were running yeah. around the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway, it was still fun. And, uh, you know what I like, too? They're oh, all yeah. different. All the gargoyles are different. Yes. Yeah, we got yes. talk. We're going to talk about that because we got to talk about beaks versus mouths and all that kind of mm -hmm. wings, not wings. How many horns? Twisted oh, yeah. horns, short horns. Yeah. Yeah. Le legs versus scales. All right. Uh, next is the one and only Bill Mulligan. When did you first see this, sir? And what was your first impression? I saw it um, like it was yesterday, November twenty first, nineteen seventy two. I was there uh, opening night, as it were. Man, yeah. The, the ads for this had me excited. The TV guide thing had me excited. I loved when they, you know, because most TV movies back then were dramas and blah, blah, blah. Not interesting to a 12 year old kid, but every now and then you get a night stalker or a cold night's death or gargoyles. I was a monster kid. So this one, there were monsters uh, and, and there's lots of monsters. I loved it. Now watching it now, does it hold up? It does hold up. Look, it's a, it's a 1972 TV movie. So you have to get used to those fade outs where the commercial would be. Yeah, it didn't so seem true. quite so painful when there actually was a commercial, but now they're just like, what the hell is that? Or the fade and, ins. <laughs> and, and boy, it's, it's fast. Like it was over. And I'm like, wait, what? Did, how, how long was this? It seems, it seems to just fly by real quickly because when they take all the commercials out, these TV movies are fairly short. But it's got a great cast. I love Cornell Wilde. Always have. Um, I love the costumes. The, the, you know, I mean, yeah, they're a little baggy. But, I mean, this was one of Stan Winston's first. All right. So, to me, it's yep. kind of like looking at, remember, Octoman. Mm -hmm. Octoman yep. is not the greatest costume on Earth. It was Rick Baker's first costume. And for a first costume in a low-budget movie, it's actually an amazing costume. You know, right. you have to look at it in the context of this. And for a movie that was, uh, they say this was shot in 18 days. Uh, I don't think they expected the kind of quality that they got from, from these costumes, that everyone did look different. And why shouldn't they? All humans look different. Look at the four of us. You know, if, if they if they were going to make a, a movie, you know, Attack of the Humans, uh, and, and it was all just the same human mask and everything, it would look stupid. I, I like the fact that there's variation, which they kind of explain that the winged ones can lay eggs. And the other ones can't. And frankly, the other ones got off easy because these eggs are half the size of the gargoyle. It's got to be excruciatingly <laughs> painful to lay these things. But let, let's hope those eggs grow oh. as the thing inside it grows and they're not that big when they come yeah. out. Yeah. Because that would uh, yes. leave a mark. There was only like one female that I could see in the whole bunch. And I'm thinking all the others left. They're like, yeah, it's almost mating season. Get out of here. You got to lay one of those. No. But this is this is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Definitely worth seeking out. Now, I don't know if modern audiences are going to be as forgiving as we are, knowing when it came out and the context and everything else. They might see this as being very cheesy and all, but no, I loved it. I had a good time. Had a good time. Chad Hunt, sir. When did you first see this? I saw it right when it premiered. Tuesday night movies. And uh, uh, 
it still, I was flabbergasted by this movie. I was so, uh, I just thought, at, I know we, I, I mixed my math up at the beginning and thought I was younger than I was when I watched it. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but for seven years old, man, and, this, and you've got monsters running around and, mm-hmm. and laying eggs and flying around and, oh my God, are you kidding me? This was the most awesome thing ever. And I didn't care that it was cheesy. Even then I thought it was cheesy and you could see the wrinkles in the, in the but it was 1970 something. Yeah, you, you that's what happened in movies, you know, with monster suits. You, you saw the every little wrinkle and every little mm-hmm. but it, yeah. but it was but it was so uh it was just so cool. It was uh, I kind of like the story, the the opening uh narration of of uh, the war in heaven and, and that kind of thing was just oh my god it was just like I was just like this <gasps> wow you know and and it was it was amazing it was amazing and that these cr- creatures you really didn't hear of any creatures uh, coming about that way mm-hmm. uh, I don't think uh, up until up to that point maybe maybe uh, the devil rides out or something like that yeah these demons and that but this this had just these amazing creatures that. I don't think had been exploited <laughs> up to this point. Hmm. And, and I just loved it. I loved it. And um, the, the whole storyline, yeah, it was, you look at it now and I'm sure people will look at it now and go, Oh, this is cheesy. You can see the zipper in the front or the back and, and this and that, but um, you have to look at it through 1970s lenses, you know, and, and yeah. see it. For it. Yep. it was yep. just, it was just an awesome, awesome monster movie. Um, and I always hope that it would turn into a series, you know, like they did mm-hmm. a lot of times with, with these movies where it started out as this TV pilot movie and, and just, and then grow from there. I don't know, like we, we talked a little bit before the show. I don't know where they would have went with it, but uh, I sure would have been tuning in to watch and, and see uh, Bernie Casey. Awesome. Cornell wild. Um, all these guys, uh, were, it was just a, just an amazing flick. And, and, uh, Stan Winston's uh, first, uh, I think it was his first, uh, mm-hmm. foray into, into, into creature effects and stuff like that. Uh, who could, who could ask for more? Um, and so, yeah, and still watching it. I always, uh, judge these movies on, do they still make me feel the same way as seven year old Chad? When you watch yeah, it, yeah, that's excellent. And, 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 and it, it does. I mean, I get to react to that time and how happy it made me to watch that movie, and and so it makes me enjoy it. So yeah, it, it stands up now, and I just I just love it to death. Love it to death. Yeah, I think the show they were going to combine it with, uh, you know, they were going to have them drive eighteen wheelers and call it Duel the Gargoyles. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. Uh, right. the, 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 our, the sequel was Gar Boys. At the, the the Gar Boys. Uh, um, I, uh, yeah, I remember watching this as well back in 1972. Uh, I remember being scared by it because of the car scene. And it felt like, I remember, I don't know why, but the bouncing gargoyles, you know, toward the end when they would spring mm-hmm. over the bushes made a huge impression on me that they could, you know, that they were leaping all crazy. Of course, mm-hmm. then wasn't long that every Tom, Dick, and Bionic band was bouncing like that, but it uh, the, the it was just the creatures, and it did not shy away from the creatures. As no, soon yeah. as they show yeah, up, no, it they show up about every once every commercial, and uh, you know between commercial breaks, they show up at least once. Yeah, and, and they're and they're terrifying. They they look great. They they run in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. kind of awesome, uh, in in not a great way, but it's awesome to relive that. Uh, I had not seen this movie since then, and I've always wanted to, but I think I had the same kind of fear: is that you know I'd watch it and go, "Oh, yeah, God, this is so stupid." Um, so I got to watch it again finally the, the other night, and I I was really impressed on how good it was. It's actually very well made. It's well constructed. It's well paced. It actually has tense scenes in it. Mm-hmm. It um, 
it has uh, it has a teensy bit of comedy. It, it they don't shy away from death. <laughs> Car- you have characters yeah. die. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, you know, it feels kind of um, maybe a little soft because, you know, we don't get any kind of gore with the violence or anything, but they bust through doors. They you know, oh, yeah. slice things. They leave claw marks on the car. They smash them in there. Uh, we so we do get some blood when he's when the one guy is hit by the truck, the one gargoyles. Oh, that's yeah. true. It's all over the, mm-hmm. the seat and everything. Yeah. Well, um, and then on, on the on the street of the one that gets hit by the truck. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on, on the highway. I think. I think really. I mean, if I was going to go, most disturbing thing was like when the one biker looks up and goes, "Hey, there's a girl hanging from that light." <laughs> <laughs> like that happens every day. It yeah. took you a while to see that, dude. Um, there's not a whole lot of light, you know, to kind of distract you. But it. Uh, so I mean, it, it was bold. I think for 1972 on television, I think it was probably pushing its own limits at the time. I. Uh, but I do remember it leaving, you know, such. Such a uh, a mark on me, you know, that I wanted to, that I really loved it because I remember them later seeing you know, pictures of it and famous monsters and other you know books and stuff I would get and just uh, just when when would I ever see it again? And then time, you know, because you couldn't catch it just anywhere for right. a good many years. But then when it came time to it, I was like, oh. Um, but yeah, and I, I will say that the biggest surprise was I. I don't. I, I I read everything inside the UIMDb and still did not catch that Scott Glenn was in this movie when he showed up. <laughs> when he showed up, I, yeah. I was like, "Wow!" So I started yeah. looking looking up uh, how old he was, and he he would have been somewhere between twenty one and twenty two when he filmed this. Um, yeah. So hmm. it was. It, he looked pretty much the same, but yeah. and sounded exactly the same. Oh my yeah. god! The yeah. voice. But uh, he he really stood out too. He he, was, he does even even at that early age, you see star quality there. Yeah, I mean he's, I God, yeah, he's amazing. Uh, everybody in this is fun. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's oh a yeah, good cast a good story. The the effects are appropriate for the time, and I think even though they look a little bit like sleeve stacks. Yeah, <laughs> um, I still, that's exactly what my wife said when she I, first. Saw. I still love them. I still think they look great, and I think we've seen worse today. Oh, <laughs> oh. yeah, so, thank you. So, yeah, uh, yeah man, um, it's it. I, I I think it did it just now reappear on Amazon Prime here recently because the quality, even though it's that I hate the the block anymore. I'm I'm so spoiled on widescreen. Yeah. But it uh, it looked really sharp. The quality that I watched. Yeah, it was a good. good yeah, it looked pretty good. good transfer. Yeah, I thought it looked good. And I know that there's supposed to be a longer cut in Europe, but I I don't know if I've ever seen it. But. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. What? Well, so I have a question. I, you know how you get sometimes you have a memory of something that's fixed in your head, and then when you go back and verify it and it turns out it's not true yeah <laughs> my, my i swear i had a memory of a gargoyle running alongside the car you know keeping up with the car going like 50 hmm. miles an hour or something um we do have the one where it lands on the car right lands yeah um, or, or holds onto the car with his yeah. feet yeah. At the back. Yeah. so i i don't know if that's something that would be a, what do they call that it's one interesting you- that the, when you remember something and then when you go back it's changed like the, the Mandela worst. effect. The Mandela, Mandela effect, effect like, yeah. Uh, okay. Stuff like that. So maybe it actually happened and it's a quirk in the matrix. Uh Swiss, <laughs> cheese, Swiss cheese brain, I think, is more likely. Mm, yeah, <laughs> might be foreign substances. Uh <laughs> I, there's a lot to talk about, uh, and a lot to show. So we've been talking about the gargoyle, so let's take a look at them. Uh, because I think that's, I mean, the, the picture up there where they're just standing around, I guess that's a behind the scenes shot. You know, you can see where the, you know, where a zipper would be and it's kind of masked, but yeah. not, not really when the light's really on it. But, but you can same. also see that everyone is different. Everyone is a completely different gargoyle. Yeah. They have horns yeah, yeah. or beaks or lizard-like or, you know, and, and I think that's a great touch. Yeah. Well, and which kind of fits with the whole legend of, of the different gargoyles on buildings and things, right? Mm-hmm. Right, they didn't all look the same, and 
Bernie That's Casey the, looks great. All the posters, yeah, yeah. So you know, Bernie Casey plays the lead one, and, and you see this shot up in the top right that we're looking at, where we get the close up. You're this right. is when this is when he fi first appears. I think well, he first appears to our characters, and he kind of uh, he. I'm going to use the word assault, but he doesn't really assault Jennifer Salt's character. He he kind of. I mean, it's creepy to say the least. It's it's he creepy. Doesn't, he doesn't he does. her face, but he does. But it's kind of innocent. A, like he doesn't know what she is, and and he so. does kind of a King Kong thing. I was just going to say, kind of like when King Kong is. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. It is. Oh man, he's but, got plausible uh, deniability. Um, but I do remember this particular scene because of the you know the visual of looking up at this. His eyes. Uh, rather are scary. Teeth. Yeah, the eyes are yeah. piercing. And but it was so long. It, it did go on long. It, it, it went on forever. That yeah. whole scene. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did kind of. You're like, okay, where's the payoff of this? And everything. Yeah. hey, can I just mention on the on the picture on the left, um, the idea of these people going to see this skeleton and everything that brought back memories of uh, Jeepers Creepers. Yes, yeah, and I um, the same thing. which is something I don't often think about for obvious reasons. But right. uh, so yeah. But this is, you know, the, the idea of this a roadside attraction having an actual monster and everything. And, of course, we get to see Uncle, uh, what, Uncle Kooky or whatever. Uncle Willie. Willie. Uncle Willie. Uncle Willie, yeah. yeah. Kooky. <laughs> yeah, what is, uh, it's Woody Chambliss. Woody Chambliss plays? Yeah, one of those guys that's in, you know, almost yeah. every Western in the late 50s and 60s. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Look, and oh, playing he, was in, he was in uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oh God! Well, he he played the old Sergeant Pepper, the Bee Gees <laughs> version. Yes. Oh no. That's... Is that the Bee Gees version? Oh my God! Yeah. Yes. Is there another version? Um, I hope not. Yeah. Oh my God! If there is, but yeah, you you would God. recognize him as, as younger pictures. You would definitely recognize him. Uh, anyway, so we, do we have any other pictures of uh, the gargoyles themselves? Yeah, here's a, here's another set of them. And we yeah, got the lady gargoyle, the female one. There, he's reading a book. He's a smart Which is kid. that's a that's a pretty iconic photo. I mean, it's it's interesting and, and you know it's just a little throwaway thing, but the, just the little nuances that he gives there. We're not really clear on the characters of the gargoyles. I mean, the the narration presents them as Satan's minions, but you don't really get the feeling of that from the film. They just more seem like almost like a subspecies of human trying to survive and trying to trying to stay in the shadows because every time they come out, humans hunt them to virtual extinction. Right. So they don't really, you know, occasionally like when he's doing that laugh and everything, sometimes he kind of puts on this evil facade, but he doesn't seem to be genuinely evil. I'm not saying they're innocents. They did string up that poor drunk lady, but. Well, they do, they do start, you know, preaching that they're going to take over the humans. This time the humans will die, they say. Yeah. Well, yeah, he does. You know, he, he does that usual thing that captors do. The predators, you know, right? I'm right. Not gonna hurt you. Don't worry. Just come along with me. It'll be safe. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're gonna take. Listen. Uh, let me just point out to my gargoyle. Any gargoyles might be watching here. In the course of this movie, they do manage to pick off a drunk lady and a cop or anything. We wipe out their entire tribe. All but two are left. I mean, and this is by a bunch of humans who were woefully unprepared for all this. The gargoyles are strong enough to rip the door off a car, but when it comes to taking out a bunch of wusses on motorcycle bikes and everything, uh, no, nah, they, they, I was not impressed with oh, come their on. military they, prowess. They had Scott Glenn. They had everything they needed. Admit, they went after Scott Glenn, and that was, of course, a tragic mistake, but um, I don't know. It, it doesn't look – I'm not afraid of them and their giant eggs. <laughs> they went up pretty easy. <laughs> You no, might be afraid of those giant eggs. I thought it was a little bit surprising to have uh, Dr. Bowley's character was, it was a little questionable. You know, like he was he was willing to let those bikers, the Scott Glenn's group, go to jail. Yeah, he was. Because he didn't want to look stupid. I guess. <laughs> Oh, hey, they're really bikers. Up. Come on, they're bikers. Ah, uh, they're bikers. There we go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, uh, like you know, that. I was going to say I did like it. that because it gave his daughter Diana a lot of character development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. yeah. she had the the I don't know moral Morals. fortitude to yeah. go try to do something about it. Now, and, and he's Scott pretty Glenn quick at leaving Uncle Willie too. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Uncle Willie was on fire and he wasn't yeah. saying anything. That's de- that's <laughs> as dead as dead. By a beam and then crushed set on by fire. a beam. Know, you know, yeah. if you're if you're in a burning building and you're screaming, I'll do what I can oh, to co- go get you. But if you're in a burning building and you're not screaming, that's a cremation. Okay, it's it's just and you're buried burning, under you know. two tons of rubble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will say this also: Scott Glenn is the most clean cut looking biker that you've ever seen in a movie. I mean, this guy, there's not a tattoo on him. He's clean. He showers bikers. daily. Dirt, yeah, bikers. Yeah. dirt bikers. That was, bikers. That, that was great. <laughs> That's we don't ride choppers. I don't got a chopper. <laughs> 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 All right, let's, let's go through some of the cast real quick because we've got some great picks here, courtesy of the one and only Bill Mulligan. All right, let's start and off Google. with. And Google. Colonel Wild. Colonel Wild. Is Colonel? Name. I think he was a major. No, Cornell. Cornell. Wild. Can I call him Colonel? You can call him Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Wild. If mama uh, called him Colonel, you can call him Colonel. <laughs> uh, you guys have more history with this this actor than I do. Uh, yeah. so if you haven't watched The Naked Prey. Oh, watch The Naked Prey. Watch watch the Naked Prey. what you're doing and go watch The Naked Prey with Cornell Wild. Oh, my God. That is possibly the manliest movie that has ever been made. Yeah. Really? What a great, what a great oh. movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, a great double feature would be the Naked Prey and Zulu. If you yeah. if your testosterone levels don't skyrocket after that double feature, there's just no hope for you. You'll wonder why how he ended up in a movie like Gargoyles, for sure. Well, but you know, I mean, <laughs> so he's, he's an interesting guy because he he was you know good looking man, fifties, uh, forties, did a lot of stuff, swashbucklers, all kinds of stuff, and then as he got older, and maybe the roles weren't weren't coming in quite as much and you know he started he did something smart he started making his own stuff and he yeah. produced uh things like no blade of grass which is a, a interesting science yeah. fiction apocalyptic movie that's really hard to find you know he, he went behind the scenes beach red did did a number of projects on his own which i really admire you know took the indie route and and went there he's at in this movie he's you know he's in his i guess he's in his 50s or 60s at this point but he's you know, which is an interesting choice. He's not a macho, young action star. And I think that makes him a lot more relatable. Mm-hmm. You know, this was back in the 70s when you could do a movie like The Omega Man with uh, Charlton Heston rocking the biggest dad body on earth. And it worked. I mean, you didn't have to be a super chiseled male model to be an action star. Outside of Steve Reeves, nobody was really sporting any kind of bod yeah, like that. Right. You know? right. They all They all had dad bods. Yeah, now now Matthew McConaughey, all these guys, they got to have six board abs oh, just to yeah. play a, a grocery clerk. Right, yeah. right. Uh, no Blade of Grass is on HBO Max now, and uh, oh, I got to catch it then. Couple oh. couple bucks on uh, Amazon. So yeah, yeah, it's you know it's funny how stuff we could never find before, you know, it it's just uh, it starts popping up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We just assume we can't find it, and then we go look and went, oh, oh my god, I got to watch yeah. like gargoyles. You know, it's a great it's a great time to be a movie buff. Because he directed that and wrote the screenplay. So he yeah. directed yeah. nine features. Is this uh, sci-fi enough for us to cover here on the show? Yes. yes. Yeah, we should, I think so. Yeah. We should do it then. All right. He did a couple of really nice uh, film noirs, too, in the 50s. The, the most obvious one I can think of is The Big Combo, which is a really mm. good film. It's about a man at a Taco Bell drive through <laughs> I love The Big Combo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we we we've covered some Naka Taka Chico. There, you, there you go. We we talked about Jennifer Salt recently in yeah, another movie. Um, yeah, and here, here she is again, uh, sporting uh, the hell of tank tops. Um, <laughs> I guess oh, oh, yeah. halters, halters, right? Halters. I forget what they're called. I'm not as they're not tank tops. Looking good. She wears Alter that top, hairstyle. Yeah. Really well. tops, yes, that's what it is. Sorry. Good. And, and she's a great screamer. Um, oh my god, is she? Ever. You know, she's got a she's got a set of pipes. But in this movie, she's more than just a, a woman in peril. You know, she does she does have some good character development, and the the interplay between her and the head gargoyle is interesting. You're not really sure what his interests are, and his girlfriend's not too happy that she's there. She had a great 1972. Yeah, sisters in this movie. And yeah. played against played Sam. Against Sam. Wow. Oh, and played against. Oh, I, you know, I totally forgot that she was in that. She was. She was in a funny in a scene too. 
few years before in uh, Midnight Cowboy too. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess we talked in Sisters about soap was kind of the right. thing that a lot of us remember from. Yeah, that's exactly Eunice Tate. That's what I remember. Her as, yeah. And, and one, one one nice thing I saw an interview with her, and the interviewer brought up at the very end, like he was afraid if he brought it up early, she was going to snatch the microphone out of his hand throw it away she he brought up gargoyles and she was she was quite happy to talk about it it's not something she's ashamed of she had a good time making it and it was hot and i'm sure she was very happy that she was not in those gargoyle suits can you imagine oh, what man. it must have been like how much sweat they probably poured out of the mm -hmm. every night oh yeah she got into producing more recently and we had mentioned this before too what ratchet uh and, and i think american horror story american yeah. horror story yep it's smart tough. lady then smart lady yeah. Good uh, let's, let's go ahead and talk about the man behind the mask there let's talk about bernie casey he uh, oh, a face a face that you will recognize in later films but here behind uh makeup i i don't know if i would recognize him but he uh he certainly has a presence in this yeah. film i don't know how much of it is him and how much of it is the the stand with some makeup but it is. He, he definitely carries it. It's definitely a team effort because it's got his emoting through, you know, through the makeup. And, and of all the gargoyles, he's the only one that has enough of a human face to actually achieve much in the way of emotion. You've got someone else dubbing the voice. Yeah. And, I would have liked to have know. heard what he sounded like because he's mm -hmm. got a that, low voice. Yeah. That might have been part of it. Yeah. That it wasn't his voice. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's, it's difficult because, yeah, his voice, obviously, they would have had to distort it as they did with with the voice there. I don't know. I don't know if it would have would have worked or not, but maybe with the distortion, his voice was fairly deep with the distortion. Yeah. It might have yeah. just become unrecognizable. So they needed some with a higher pitch to to alter. But can you now we've talked about this before, Bill, but he has those very uh, piercing eyes with the contact lenses. And yeah. those are not today's contact lenses, are they? Oh, God, no. Oh, no. Yeah. And, no. You know, if there's one person I don't want to piss off, it would be Bernie Casey. I mean, look at the man. But, uh, yeah, those, those contact lenses back then were made out of solid glass. Mm -hmm. They they fit over your whole – I mean, you had to just about gouge your eyes to put them in there. They were super uncomfortable. Everybody weren't weren't they them. called uh, scleral lenses? Scleral lenses. I'm sure the actors had other names for them. I mean, I think they're, the, they're they're probably the main reason that in some of the scripts that Christopher Lee kept saying he didn't want to play Dracula because they kept sticking these horrible hunks of red glass into his eyes. Awful, awful. And and I hear horror stories of when things went wrong, like they rolled up in the back or they broke or something. Um, you know, I, I mean, I remember when they came up with soft contact lenses and people who wore contacts. And I, I didn't for the longest time. Uh, I didn't need glasses till I was 40. People were just like, so there should be a special Nobel Prize because up until that mm -hmm. point, those things, they kept popping out of your eyes. People today, kids today, they don't know how people suffered back in the days just mm. so they could see. But yeah, those those contact lenses are god awful. We're well rid of them, if rid of them we truly are. But he took it like a trooper. I mean, that had to be, that had to be a miserable experience. Sorry he's not with us now that we could interview him. Uh, that had to be miserable. It, it was hot. Mm. You're in that costume. You, you've got, you know, Coke bottles shoved into your eyes. Um, you have to walk in slow motion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And make make weird noises. Yeah. <laughs> you Thanks guys know he was an uh, NFL. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Player, oh, was he? Right? Yeah. Well, he, he looks it. In the 60s, he was with the uh, 49ers and the Rams, played half back, and then kind of went to wide receiver. Also, was a track star. He he had he was he had a good charisma. I mean, he was in one of my favorite movies from that time, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Small scene, oh, yeah. but, but yeah. really good. And and uh, one of my favorite parody movies, I'm gonna get you sucker. Yes. Which if you if you have any fondness for the black exploitation movies, you gotta watch that movie because yeah. it's spot on funny. And he plays a funny character, but really well played. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's that that's a good parody. That's one of the the kinds of parodies I like to see. Yeah. Not the, you know the 300 Spartans parody and all that stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. um, definitely worth watching. <laughs> spies what, Like Us. He was in Spies Like Us. Yeah. What, 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 what gave him his name? Because I knew who he was 
but I couldn't tell you why. It's one of those many '70s actors where you, you know, was it because what? of Guns oh. and the Seven or? Well, was, I think it was because he started off because he was a professional athlete. Was yeah, the first yeah. reason people knew him. Uh, but what was it? what was the black exploitation movie that he was well, in? Cleopatra yeah. Jones, Black Cleopatra Gun, Jones. Black Gun, Black. Okay, Dr. Black Gun, Doctor Black, Mister Hyde. Well, he was, uh, wait, 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 wait. He was in Doctor Black and Mister. Was he? He, he was Doctor Henry Pride in that. Oh, yeah. I see. I, I was. I thought for sure it was him, and I was looking through IMDb, and I didn't see it. Now I realize it's called the Watts Monster. I what? love what? It's the, Watts called, Monster. Yeah, the Watts Monster. It's Doctor Black and Mister Hyde, please. Right. And I love that movie, even though <laughs> and he's if it, if he weren't the main star, even though you know what I'm saying. Um, if he weren't the main star, it would be a total disaster because literally, to you know, Doctor. Dr. Black uh, takes the potion and turns into a white guy. Okay, that's that's a funny premise right off the bit. And the way they did it is they just, they practically just like blew powder in his face. And he's walking around looking like he just sneezed in a bucket of flour. Mm -hmm. And if any any other actor would not have been able to pull that off, it just would have been laughable. But because he's got that gravitas, he's got that, that kind of dignity. The same thing that William Marshall brought to Blackula. If you're going yeah. to do these ludicrous premises, you'd better have a really strong lead that has has the the, the pull to pull it off. Because otherwise, you get Blackenstein, and you don't want to get Blackenstein. No, Just not on saying. purpose. Not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh man. All right, let's talk about yes, the one and only Scott Glenn uh, as James Rieger. Um. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean he. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, man. Silence of the Lambs. Uh, yeah. Hunt for Red October. Suck uh, the Lunch. Keep. Um, the Keep. Daredevil. Yeah, the the keep. keep. Yeah. Daredevil. He was awesome as Stick. Yes. Dare, the yeah. Daredevil. Uh, Netflix yeah. show. I think The uh, Keep and Silverado are the first memories I have of him, or movies that I remember seeing him in. Urban Cowboy is one. Uh, the Challenge, which I liked. It's a stupid movie, but I liked it. He's, yeah, he's. Um, you know, look at look at him when he's so young. He's got that boyish look. It's like looking at a young Jan Michael Vincent. Um, but and fortunately, he made different choices as he grew up. Now he's he's reached the point where he is he's he he managed to age into that Clint Eastwood grizzled a yeah. man who who her life has has tried to beat him down, and he looked it right in the eye and said "f you," and is still living. I mean, it's it, you know, looking at him now, looking at that picture in the middle. It's like the ruins of a, of a you know once great Greek building or something. Uh, you know, you still see the the fire and the spark. He's old, but he's not gone. He was. Uh, if it, if there are any Sons of Anarchy fans out there, which I was a big Sons of Anarchy fan, he was yep. uh, originally supposed to play Clay Morrow, who was the, oh, wow. uh, in that, and was replaced. You know, everybody knows by Ron Perlman, but I think it would have been a lot more interesting. If he was played by Scott Glenn, a lot more interesting mm -hmm. of a character. But do you guys ever see uh, Barber, the Barber? No, that's a movie from mid 2010s teens. Uh, he's a serial killer, and mm -hmm. like I he's a small that. town. He's a barber in a small town, so he's like everybody knows him. Mm -hmm. it's oh, pretty creepy. It's one. pretty creepy. <laughs> Jeez. I think uh, he's he's also currently doing um, Castle Rock. Yeah, he was well, on Castle Rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he was in the movie Greenland, which came out over the winter. And he hmm. plays a like, grizzled old dad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to say grizzled. If you if you cast Scott Glenn now, it's grizzled old, and you can just fill in the blank with whatever, yeah. 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 <laughs> but he, okay, so who else? I mean, did, I guess you guys knew he was going to be in it. But when he wrote, when he when it revealed he was the one, the guys on the motorcycle, you know, riding around the dirt bikes, riding around poor Uncle Willie's burnt down barn area. What did you guys go? What or what, what was your reaction? Well, this time when I saw it is sort of like I never remembered Scott Glenn being in it as many times right. as I've seen this movie. So I saw him and I was like, that's Scott. And and that was so it was like a it's like when you uh you're going through your French fries at Burger King and down at the bottom of an onion ring fell into the bottom. Oh, that's the best. 
<laughs> that is the best. <laughs> Good oh, analogy. Oh, my God. So just an added, added treat there. I said, oh, yeah. my God, it's Scott oh, Glenn. Scott Grandin. Scott yeah, Grandin I, didn't, yeah. Oh, no. I didn't remember being in this, but I had looked for some posters to put on one of our boards, and and uh, Scott Glenn is listed on some of the posters, and I was yeah. like, what? Wait, in 72? I, uh, so. That's amazing. You know, you know, it's like it's like when you go to cookout and you order a small bag of hush puppies, and then you get it and you open the bag and there's Scott Glenn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, that, that visual is going to haunt me. All right. Uh, what about the director? I, you're, you're looking at, I pictured a face in the bag, you know. Yeah. Or a little, a little teeny Scott Glenn, like this this one. Yeah. Well, well they never get it right because of that, you know. Right? <laughs> they never get the order right because you got to speak through a speaker. And it's like, I, I don't know. He, he either said Hush Puppies or Scott Glenn. I don't know. <laughs> and you can't tell what they say when they repeat it back to you. That's for sure. You just so you just say, "Yeah, sure, whatever." <laughs> Scott Glenn, yeah, food. <laughs> uh, what, do, what do we know about Bill Norton? He's the director of this movie. Um, um I got one for you. Yes. Uh oh. Well, go ahead. Talk about Bill Norton. You guys oh, talk about it. I'll, I'll see if anybody else picked up on it. Uh, well, I mean, he actually made some uh, some pretty interesting movies. Um, now I'm having to. Look I, I only knew him from Buffy and Angel that he did some episodes of, uh, of Buffy well, and Angel. He did but... a bunch of episodes of Tour of Duty. Um, but the movie he made before this was Cisco Pike, which gave, um, hmm. oh, geez, what's his name? I don't know. Who is it? Country country star. Um, God, Chris I feel Christopher. like an idiot. Yes, Chris Christopherson gave him his oh. first movie role. Oh. And uh, Karen Black and Gene Ackman. Oh my goodness! Wow, that's a, that's a hell of a cast. And Harry Dean Stanton. Oh, <laughs> and Roscoe <laughs> Lee Brown. Oh my! Wow, this this sounds and, like the greatest Antonio movie ever. Vargas. <laughs> Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear. Mm -hmm. Oh man! But right. But oh, it's it's also got Joy Bang. Joy Bang. Joy Bang. Yes, we talked about her this, recently. <laughs> The real connection is I'll, I'll bring up at the end of the movie because uh -oh. it has something to do with uh, our next film. So, Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Tease. Jeff, keeping the mystery going. Ah, wow. Stay tuned ah. for that. <laughs> now you better remember. You better remember. It doesn't six six connections of Bill. Yeah. <laughs> There's your hook, Jeff. There's your hook. Uh, uh, oh, he directed more American Graffiti. That explains things. Ugh, wow. Uh, sorry. Wait, I don't know if you guys were like, oh, wow, more American Graffiti. Oh, even what? more American Graffiti. Eh, that didn't work. Good try, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then a double feature with Grease 2. The sequels nobody went to see. <laughs> Grease 2. Oh, man. Oh, you're killing me. But he's done a bunch of TV shows. I mean, he did the unit too, so I don't know if he kind of specialized in uh, uh, armed forces yeah. related TV shows or or, or what. Yeah, you know, as far apart as those were. Um, I'd be interested in asking someone who who's done that. You know, look, all the fame and glory is in movies. You could do a hundred episodes of TV, and you work steady. You do some good stuff. Some of those TV episodes are probably seen by more people than will ever see your movies. But you don't really, you know, you don't get to be talked about as a director. Even, you know, some of the directors that we are kind of fond of who, who worked in the genres and everything, they, you know, they get books written about them. But who writes books about directors who specialize in TV shows? He did a, he, he directed a couple of Hercules movies uh, with Kevin Sorbo. There you mm -hmm. go. Uh, the, the writers, I want to bring up the writers because they made one of my, other favorite bad horror TV movies uh -oh. from 1978, Devil Dog, Hound of Hell. Oh, oh my that. god! That movie is something special. Oh, That's one is. Thing. we have to do that at some point. We got to do Devil Dog, Hound of is Hell. Is that even available? She oh, got yeah. it somewhere, somewhere it's, it has to be. I'll find it if if I have to. That's got Yvette Mimoire. I can't yeah. pronounce her name. It's got it's got Simon Yvette Mimoire, yeah. Thank you. I'll take that as, as a possibility. And and that dog, that <laughs> stupid, stupid 
dog. It's like they took a, a poodle and stuck like devil a little horns on it mm -hmm. and everything. You can almost see like a dealy bopper. It's mm -hmm. oh, it's so funny. Awa, awa. What? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they solarized the film to give it a creepy look and like this is so uh, oh, four did. bucks. But I think four it was bucks. directed by Curtis Harrington. I mean, it had an actually good director in it. But four bucks on Amazon. Oh That's God, a, four uh, bucks! That's what it costs to make. Okay. Richard Crenna and Kim Richards. <laughs> Richard Crenna. Richard Crenna was such a TV movie whore. Anyway, uh, but, <laughs> but you know, you know, he must have like gone back to his trailer every day and drank himself blind when he's like, "How did it come to this? I'm working on Devil Dog, the Hound of Hell." Unless they had a so better I, name for it while they were making it. Scott R.G. So you, you, That's a blessing. Do you think these are brother and sister or no, husband, husband and, and wife? wife. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Unless they're from West Virginia and they might be both. Who knows? But oh, stop! Oh. <laughs> but they did. They did some decent stuff. I mean, yeah. Captains and Kings was a you know one of those Taylor Caldwell miniseries adaptations. Um, yeah, I mean, Kung the Fu. On this, two, two yeah, Kung, Kung Fu was fun. I mean. The writing on this is it's efficient. It um, you know, they establish the characters fast, they get the exposition out of the way. It's got that TV movie feel where, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time. We don't even have a real movie's length of time to tell the story. So it's gotta be fast. Hey, I just picked up my daughter and she we she are she and I are gonna talk about things that we really shouldn't talk about because we already know this. Like, as you know, dear, I'm an archaeologist. I like, okay, but you accept that. It's a TV movie and we got Five minutes to establish who these characters are until we, you know, get into some gargoyles or something. Here, we got to move fast and efficiently. There's and a do. formula to it, and they do. I, do. The first stop is that Uncle Willie's, and you see this that's, nice yeah. big skull, and it's really mm -hmm. cool. Oh, you get you get some uh, you get some gargoyle action like about five minutes into the movie when they take yeah. the wrong road. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's right. They're being watched by a gargoyle. But I just I like I like the conversation between the two of them. It establishes that these are likable characters. We yeah. get that the, what the dad does, he writes. He's obviously divorced. How's mom doing? Ah, blah blah. Okay, so we get this. We get the vibe. We get the relationship here. That there's a, a nice adult relationship between father and daughter. She takes photographs. He writes the books. I mean, okay, so this mm -hmm. is cool. I like that. That's nicely um, done, and and we like them. And now we don't want anything bad to happen to them. Yeah, we did make a huge skip here, and we uh -oh. gotta we gotta pick up the slack before as before we wrap up. Oh we're yes, gonna talk, we're gonna talk about Grace and Hall. So Grace yes. and Hall plays the uh, uh, she owns the, this is Roper. Yeah, yeah. big she owns time. The hotel. She owns the hotel, and um, of course, most people would recognize her from Dark Shadows. Yeah, right. That's Julia Hoffman, Doctor Julia Hoffman. But uh, she she's a bit of a a booze head here, and it is hilarious. Did I not have a graphic for her? I thought for sure I did. Um, no. Damn, I meant to. No, didn't have one, but she she's a lot of fun in this. Oh movie. yeah, she, yeah. She's sparky and in there. She is him. not Mrs. Roper. I'm not unless it's. <laughs> oh no no no! I just meant really Roper. Roper. Yeah, she was. She, she was the she, early. She's equivalent. totally yeah. she's totally coming on to him and and but she yeah. has the worst pickup line ever. It's like yeah, the yeah. last guy I talked to died in a horrible <laughs> accent. Bye. That's what I want. And then she yeah. looks surprised when he walks away. <laughs> it's, <laughs> well, it's not often you meet a woman that has worse game than I do, but uh, there you go. She actually had a uh, Oscar nomination for Night of the Iguana for supporting actress. Wow. wow. As Cornell Wilde had an Oscar nomination as well years ago, years before. Mm, she was in Satan in High Heels. There, there's something to look for. What is that? <laughs> wow. Not a horror movie. Not a horror no, movie. No, it's not, but uh, what a great title. It is considered something kind of like the devil wore Prada. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> he wore Prada in high heels. Yeah. Uh, More like the devil's good looking man. No, she does Ooh. a great job. She's a she's a, a nice added character in here. I think that. And she almost she almost got away. Almost got away. But yeah. Yeah. Took the wrong truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But can you a imagine? A Four hundred seventy-six episodes of Dark Shadows. 
Uh, there's people have done more than that on other soaps. It's I know, soaps. I know, but still, yeah. Uh, if yeah. it wasn't a soap, I, it would be hard to make. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so we should wrap things up and kind of give our our recommendation about this. Uh, any any random thought? Maybe even should it be remade? Should they try doing this game? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe Bill, maybe Bill Mulligan should direct it. All right, let's let's oh. do this. I kept waiting for the the queen gargoyle who's laying those giant ass eggs. Yeah, that's, oh, that's yeah. what I was waiting for. Yeah, uh, definitely. So tell us Never more. Never <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, there were just so many unanswered questions, just like that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a. This is a fun, fun movie. And it's, I think the running time only ends, ends up being like, what, an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes? Yeah, it's like it's hour, hour. Something like that. And, and so, yeah, yeah it's just, it, it goes by, it goes by very quickly. Uh, cool creatures, uh, a cool premise for the creatures. Like I said, I love that beginning narration uh, that mm -hmm. sort of tells where the gargoyles came from and everything. And um, so, yeah, it's a fun, fun movie. And I'm really glad we picked it. And um, so, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon. I'm Amazon Prime. Go watch it. It's it's it really is a fun movie. Excellent, Agreed. Bill, Bill Agreed. Mulligan, sir. What do you have, Dad? Uh, I I I think they could remake it. I hope they don't because I just fear that if they remade it, the the gargoyles would be CGI. They would beat us over the head with the message that humans are the true monsters and the gargoyles are good, and you know, I just but I would I would have liked to have seen more. This is one of those rare TV films where it's like it's too short. There, there mm -hmm. should have been another. They had all the action beats and everything you need. I wish there'd been twenty minutes more of um, some gargoyle characterizations, a little more understanding of exactly what they were. Yeah. Were they truly evil or not, or what everything was? But the ending could not be more open for a sequel. I mean, mm -hmm. like they they do everything but end and have the end turn into a question mark. So, um, you know, yes, there's, there's a lot. Okay. When the gargoyles are flying, you will not believe it. You will not believe it for a minute that the, <laughs> that those little wings flapping ineffectually in the wind could carry one body, much less two, but okay. Right. You know, you got to suspend your disbelief. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, just, you know, put your expect, hold back on your expectations a little bit and appreciate what these folks were able to do mm -hmm. in just a couple of weeks to shoot a very ambitious film. And do a good job and stand and you see some people like scott glenn and stan winston who are beginning their careers but show the reason why we know about them today because even at the beginning there's a quality that yeah. goes above and beyond what had to be done and and it's, it's fun to see i definitely recommend it yep. excellent yep. all right jeff what about you sir yeah watch this i i think it held up very well uh and Again, despite the suits, which I'm, I totally, you know, could look past as well. The, uh, you know, <laughs> what you said, Bill, about the wings, uh, it's actually far, far more realistic when all you have is shadows and you hear wings flapping. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was that was scarier yes. than than uh, actually seeing that. They tried. Wait, wait, they tried. You know, can can I just say, say interrupt for just? Say, I didn't want to yeah, interrupt, yeah. but um, I had the feeling that that's probably what they intended to do with this movie. And then when the costumes showed up and they're like, whoa, these costumes are way better than we expected. They ended up showing the monsters way more than maybe they should have. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, I, when you look at most TV movies, they usually do keep the monsters in the shadows because that's a really good idea to do so. But with these, it's like, these look great. Let's front and center. Let's, let's gargoyle out here. I mean, so, come on. We, we get the gargoyle coming over the end of the bed scene. Come on. Yes. That was yeah. Yeah. Oh, they have to come up and then... Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Holy crap. It's stealthy. <laughs> it, another thing that was kind of cool. I mean, these were, it was mostly uh location shots, right? It might've been a set in the jail or uh, in the motel, but it looked like it was really the room of an old rundown. I uh, know it was actually, they did. They used an old yeah. rundown motel. Uh, right. So they're Bounded outside. For real. Yeah. <laughs> they're outside taking these shots and the wind's blowing them and you see storms in the distance and you hear thunder. I, I just thought that was just really worked well with the, the yeah. story and the way they were doing it. Yeah. That one so, shot yeah. where 
storm is often the uh, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. really strong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> using using your environment to your advantage, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I what can I say? I this was I'm so glad we actually finally got to do this. It was great to revisit this. Uh the costumes held up. I they really did. I yes, they you know they look like a man in a suit, but even that that's okay. Works. I mean, it, it's just they're so very much. detailed. Dude. They're yeah. they're shot for the right. most part. They're shot really well. I mean, yeah, running in slow motion is hokey, but it it you know I spent my youth watching the Six Million Dollar Man, yeah. so watching things run in slow motion or the Hulk even right is kind of yeah my jam yeah. for the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought it. I thought the scene in the car was still very scary, and even in the Absolutely. you know um, because. Most of it's because of Jennifer Salt's scream. She did have a. She could have been a screen mm, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. that. She certainly had, had, it, had the lungs there. Um, I yeah. I mean Scott Glenn's and it's just it's a lot of fun and it, uh, it it's a different time. It's a little bit more innocent film than I think a lot of horror fans are used to nowadays. True, but give it a shot. Give it a shot. It's got it's got some fun stuff in it to to enjoy. Gargoyles. Agreed. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. So uh, there you go. It's uh, available right now on Amazon Prime. So check it out and leave us uh, some comments down below. Also, hit the subscribe button if you like what we're doing. And uh, if you hit the uh, thumbs up, that helps too. So all that will do us some good. Uh, do we have any feedback this week? We do not. Okay. I should have asked before and acted like I was prepared. What's well, happening? I said I should have asked before and act like I prepared. Now I had to say that twice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do know what our next movie is. Is uh, Jeff going to finally reveal this, this <laughs> secret he's been holding back all day? Yes, yes. This, better, this okay. better be good, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, no, I forgot what it was. Okay. <laughs> yes. So the, uh, the uh, director of, of Gargoyles, Bill Norton, Bill Norton. his father – is a was a screenwriter named William Norton uh -huh, uh -huh. who did a whole bunch of movies that yeah. people like Burt Lancaster and uh, uh, Burt Reynolds were in uh, The Scalp Hunter, Sam Whiskey um, oh I Dismember Mama etc. <laughs> White, Light, wow. White Lightning Big Bad Mama, Brannigan, John Wayne but all the mama movies yeah. he also Wrote the script for Day of the Animals. Ooh. Oh, a film directed by none other than William Girdler. Oh, yes, and, one of our favorites. And our next film is directed by William Girdler Asylum of State Satan. Asylum of Satan. He's Asylum of Satan. Satan. Oh. Uh, very early film. And uh, boy, that was a long way around to get to that. Uh, yeah, but there's, you know, I told you, <laughs> six, six degrees of connection to Gargoyle. That's, so, yeah. Not, or not Glenn or something. But this will be the first time I've seen that movie. So that's, oh, me too. Yeah, I didn't even know about it. I I swear I've looked at his stuff. The only, the, the big one we need to find a really a good copy of is Abby. But uh, mm. good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, that one's a tough one to find. And I'm not, I watched some of this and I thought it was pretty good copy. And then I watched it again. It didn't seem that good. Maybe my uh, bandwidth was uh, down or something, but hmm. it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Mm. Uh, Santos would be proud. The yeah. Asylum of Satan from 1972. Oh, man. Yeah, the Black Saint was a huge, huge fan of this. He would like Gargoyles too with all the slow motion stuff. He would have. The, he, oh, he hated slow motion stuff. <laughs> what was it? Uh, it was uh, the uh, Blackula had that scary yeah, yeah. scene with uh, yeah running down the hallway. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Enjoy Gargoyles in a review. But uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be back to talk about Asylum of is it Stanley? Stanley. Of Stanley. Yeah. Stanley. Yeah. Of Santa. Yeah. The Silent of Santa. Oh, no, man. Silent, yes. Say, Silent Stanley, everybody. <laughs> mm, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I do not know anything about this movie. This, I, I did. I started yeah. watching. I didn't know much about it, but I guarantee you it's interesting. So okay. We'll, we'll, 
That's all we ask. I can't wait. I can't wait. This is going to be so exciting. All right, guys. Bill, Chad, Jeff, thank you for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. (laughs) All right. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Adios.